in 1950, 58 or 9, I had been working in New York City in a, as a, in a publishing company, and I couldn't stand New York City. I thought anyone that lived in New York City had to be crazy. So I bought a little building in North Tisbury, and I changed it into a bookstore called the Red Cat Cafe and Bookstore, and I opened it up in 1959 for the summer. How long did you have the cafe going? Oh, that was only two years. And what was that like? Who would come? Oh, Leonard Bernstein, Catherine Cornell and their crowd, uh, Lillian Hellman. And a lot of people, I, I didn't, I wasn't that sophisticated then to, to get the names. I know Mark Blitzstein was there. He was a genius composer. People that were uh, in the arts and in music and writing, it was such an out-of-the-way place. Mm -hmm. And you could bring your own uh, liquor. And the food was delicious. We only had one meal, which was a lobster dinner with a chowder, lobster, corn in the cob, salad, Humphreys rolls, and Humphreys homemade pies. All that for three ninety-five a plate. We we did keep hamburg in the uh, ice box so that if somebody didn't like, couldn't eat lobster, then we cook them a hamburger. And who did the cooking? You. My sister. My sister. She just took over the kitchen, and I was there. I was sort of the maitre d'. I greeted people. If there was any waiting, if people had to wait for tables, uh, I, I took them up to my apartment upstairs and gave them drinks, plied them with drinks. <laughs> they uh, they ate literally ate in a bookstore surrounded by books. At 5 o'clock every night, we'd close the door and, and take all the books off the tables and pile them neatly in corners and stuff, and then uh, turn the tables, which were bookstore tables, into dining tables. My sister on Thursday nights would have ballad singing, and we found out that Tom Rush and a couple other well-known singers started out there singing. We had a piano in there in the back room. We had everything jammed in together. It was small, and, and it had a lot of charm. And that went for a couple of years, and then it, that was the end of it. We sold it. And in the fall of 68, I bought the, the same building back that I had sold. because I bought it back again. It doubled the price and uh, eventually put an addition on the back. And then I got married again and started another family, and we lived there. By the time I got the Red Cat back again, I did use the same name, Red Cat. But I don't think I could have gotten a food license. By that time, zoning come into play. See, when I opened the first Red Cat Cafe and ran a restaurant, I didn't even, it didn't even apply for anything. I just started selling it. just put up a sign. In 59, you could do anything. By 68, it was different. I spent an awful lot of money on stock, and I amazed my one competitor, who was David Hugo, the Bunch of Grapes. And Hugo's Bunch of Grapes wasn't open in the winter, so the philosophy was we would be an all-year-round bookstore. We would service the island people, and we stocked all any book we could find by written by anybody that had any connection to Martha's Vineyard. That was one, one little trick we had. And then we stocked bestsellers and all normal books, too. But I had a huge stock in there. And uh, then David Hugo pepped up a little bit because he realized he was people were coming to my place. And then he stayed open year-round, and, of course, Vineyard Haven is centrally located. And little by little, he began to get back his customers and then he sold out to the Nelsons. And the new bunch of grapes is, uh, is a swell store. I, there was no way I could compete with that. And I, I, I realized that, that it was pointless to stay open in the winter. I mean, it was one of these romantic gestures again, you know, sit there and have interesting conversations over a few drinks and just chit-chat with nice people all, all winter long, you know. Sort of a, a drop-in center. Anyone who's a writer or artist in the vineyard could come in and have a drink and... But it, it just didn't work out. Well, you used to have wonderful author parties there. Yeah, but they yeah they were they were terrific. Everybody loved those things. I I loved them, but they were um, they they, they were expensive, and I didn't sell that many books. And um, but we had some wild parties there, especially the first couple of years when it was um, still a novelty. I mean, people would stay their way into the dark night, um, uh, not wanting to go home, and what? awful lot of liquor. Also, I bought myself a schooner, an old beat up Gloucester schooner. The idea then was to sail the schooner to the Bahamas in the winter, live on the boat, and run the bookstore in the summer. It was just too complicated. So I sold the schooner and then sold, eventually sold the bookstore because it was lo losing money. But a lot of people try it, and it's an awful lot of fun.